Okay, so I've returned to Izandwana. It's the fourth time I've been, but this time I'm doing things differently. I'm camping right here on the banks of the Buffalo River, about a kilometer and a half from the spot where the men would have crossed into Zululand in 1879. And the other thing I'm doing differently this time is I'm walking from the Buffalo River from by Rourke's Drift all the way to Izandwana. Got my coffee, got my food. <laughs> it's going to be a long walk but fun. Following this bridle path, the old bridle path, which I'm told is quite hard to follow, but I've been given directions. I'll keep you posted how it goes. Okay, so now I've reached the Bachi River. Just got to find a nice spot to get across and then try and work out how to pick up the path again. Don't you just love it when you're following a track and it splits? <laughs> I'm gonna follow this one. That looks more like a wagon track. That looks like it's more recent with too many rocks in the way. So I'm about three kilometers into the hike, something like that. And now the, the old wagon track merges with this brand new road. And I'm told by Charles at Rourke's Drift Hotel, give that a follow for a bit, keeping this conical hill on my left and I'll be on the right track, literally. <laughs> okay, so I've just finished my first serious climb up this road. So that's where I started, up at the bottom of Shiani Mountain. Although, if I'm telling the truth, I did get a lift for the first couple of k's to the start of the path. And then as I spin around, I'm not sure if you can see in the haze, but right there. So I think that's the top of the hill called Enhepeni. And now I'm just looking at my map, bear with me. As I come over that hill on the, old, on the new road, I've then been told to take this path here by one of the friendly locals and that looks about right and then I'll follow it down around Izandwana by the looks of it. So you turn off the old, the new road, you turn right and this seems as good a stop as any to have a bit of breakfast. The time is half past seven, I've been going about an hour and a quarter. So I was told sometimes if you lose the track, look for like an indentation in the, in the ground almost like a trench, and that's where the old track would have been. It's hard to see, but it is there. So here's another example of where I think I can see the old wagon trail. You see this dip in the road, in the ground? Pretty certain that's where the old track would be. I'm well escorted on the journey. I've even managed to pick up my own battalion of locally regular troops to escort me. Amazingly, there's still a lot of artifacts to find. Here's an old boot from a soldier of the 1st 24th and over there is what looks like some sort of ration pack that they would have been issued. Pretty amazing. So the mountain of Izandwana really does dominate the landscape from whichever direction you're coming from and bizarrely it always looks and feels closer than it actually is. So I've left the main road now, I've cut through a farmer's gate trying to follow the old track. I'm not sure if I'm exactly on it, but basically I'm swinging around to the southeast of Izandwana there, trying to pick it up down by the Manzinyama River, hopefully. So I'm stood essentially now at the foot of the east slope of Izandwana, and I'm looking back the way I've come. That's pretty much where the right horn would have come down and round and attacked into the rear of the British Army on that day. Okay, it's nearly half past nine. I've been hiking for about three hours and I'm here. There's the mountain, more or less on the southeast side, and here are the first cairns I've seen which mark the dead of that day.